We had some technical difficulties this morning. Praise God. We didn't get through. If you knew the drama behind the scenes sometimes, you know, it goes in church. <laughs> God is good. We focus on the good. Amen? Because we know all the good comes from God. Amen? All of it. And if you see any bad in this earth, guess what? The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So, uh, we know God is good. And there's always something good we could find in our lives. Amen? There's, there's good and evil happening all around, but there's lots of good happening too. Yes. And that's where we set our eyes on Jesus. That's how we keep walking by faith. That's how we walk on water. <laughs> and uh, storms are real. I'm not denying storms are real. But God's word is more real, if you want to put it that way. Amen. And, uh, we're going to be focusing on the more real things. Amen. The, the eternal good things. Amen. And uh, bad things are real too. But their time's running up. Amen. Amen. We don't have to be affected by the bad. Thank Hallelujah. You. That's why we sing these songs of God's goodness and victory. Right enough, and if you haven't experienced, you need to experience more of God's goodness. Amen. Amen. Because there's lots. Amen. Super abundant. Amen. Praise God. And I um, just want to thank Pastor David Russ. A lot for me to share. I don't really have a label. I'm a sharer. I'm going to share bread. And, uh, you know, you see me do a bunch of things around here. <laughs> they call me what you want. Just call me blessed. Amen. And, um, you know, just so you know, you, you guys are sharers too, you know. You have bread to give. And uh, it's the bread of life, the living word. And uh, don't ever doubt the, the power of the word that's in you. And if you just see yourself as God sees you, man, you'd be jumping up and down. You'd be bold as a lion. Amen? You'd be full of courage. And that's what we need to be. Um, so this is kind of like a, I'll just call it a two-piece meal. <laughs> you know, sometimes you get a three-piece meal, you get fries, a burger, and a Coke. I'm not, I'm not trying to get you hungry. <laughs> but, yeah, a combo. We just got two, two on the menu today. And... Uh, you know, we, I might need your participation. I don't do this too often, but that's okay. And um, that means you'll have to pay attention. <laughs> sometimes in church we can go in automatic mode, you know. And just, amen. Yeah. At the wrong times. Have you ever heard anybody do that at church? At the wrong times? Amen. It's like, Lord, help that person. <laughs> Here's a good one. If you ever listen to Ron Canoli, Jesus is Alive, you guys know that song. Yeah. For all the earth and trouble. And anyways, there's this part he goes, uh, he's talking about Satan. He goes, for he had thought he had won a mighty victory. And then you hear in the audience, I'm like, why are you clapping for the devil? And you ain't listening. You're doing the Christian cliche thing, you know, the automatic brain. Amen. Every time you hear victory, amen. He's talking about the devil. Anyway, this is a free, just for your entertainment. I just want you to pay attention. And at this time, if you can kindly uh, put your, your phones on, on silent. You, know, you don't want to miss those important calls, right? <laughs> and uh, it'll just help us focus. And um, um, anyways, I'm going to start off here with the, with the first combo part. And it's about, it's about understanding. And um, see, I, don't, I brought the back, uh, Bible hard copy back up. And I bought the, the smart looking wisdom glasses so I can look smart. <laughs> But I thank God, I can get a hold of this tablet here. You can actually zoom in. <laughs> Hallelujah, I can see, I can see. But uh, you know what, you can believe God for perfect eyesight. It doesn't matter what age, okay? And as I'm speaking, the word of God, the Bible says, the word brings health to all our flesh. Amen. So you can receive health Amen. for your flesh, even Amen. when I'm talking. And you know, sometimes we, we lack in how we explain and speak. But the Holy Spirit's not lacking. He'll speak to you. Right. And you can get something out of this service today, regardless if it's your thing on the combo or not, you know? And um, this first part here, I wanted to just look. Um, it's talking about in all you're getting, and um, if you have a Bible or a tablet, we're going to turn to 
Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. I'm just going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask that you give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened. And revelation and understanding sets us free, Father. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Your word changes us. Hearing words of life changes us. Hallelujah. It changes the, uh, the environment we live in. Thank you, Lord. We choose life words, Lord. You said the world was framed by your word. We frame our world, Lord, with your word, with living words, Father. In the name of Jesus, be blessed, Jesus. Be magnified. Be lifted up. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Okay, so Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And, um, and in all your getting, get understanding. And here it's talking about wisdom. It's the main thing. And then it talks about getting wisdom. And then also, I'm just going to magnify this part here. In all you're getting, get understanding. It's like, don't get shopping. Don't get your coffee. We get a whole bunch of things in life. We get our house, we get our wife, we get our car. Whatever you're getting, have you been getting understanding? Because God puts that up there. Wisdom. He said, it's the principal thing. And, um, you know, as, as I'm reading, I'm going to ask a few questions here. And uh, I just wanted to read it from the uh, Passion Translation. And it says, four, seven, okay, Proverbs 4, 7, 25. Wisdom is the most valuable commodity, so buy it. Oh. What have you been spending your money on? Oh. That's good. I'm going to ask. <laughs> Um, revelation knowledge is what you need, so invest in it. And uh, we know wisdom comes from God, of course. It's, it's really investing in God and His Word. He does it in this Word form, okay? And um, the thing about getting understanding, it just helps you cope in life, you know? We, we like to know what's going on. We have why questions. And sometimes when we don't have the answers to why, man, you're open to confusion, frustration, blame, and the answer is in plain sight. It's in the Word of God. But we don't always see it, do we? You ever see something in the Bible one day and like, that was in there the whole time? It's like, Lord, was I blind? Yeah, we need revelation knowledge. And, and God has to open our eyes. It's all in there. And... Um, you know, there's this joke that John Wayne said. You know who John Wayne is? He's a Hollywood actor for those showing my age before I know. Maybe most of you know John Wayne. But he said, uh, life is tough, but it's even more tougher when you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to lift their hands? <laughs> I'm not asking you to, you know. Have you all made stupid mistakes? I'm like, you don't have to show your hands. But it's true. And, uh, so, you know, when I'm, when I'm sharing and stuff like this, I don't want you to think that, hey, I got it all together. <laughs> okay? It's the Word of God is for all of us. It spreads for all of us. And um, I'm going to turn here back to uh, Proverbs chapter 1 here. Proverbs. How long, you simple ones? It's not bad, what else is it? <laughs> How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? Um, for scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. And uh, <laughs> somebody didn't hear the first memo on the top of the page. <laughs> Be healed in Jesus' name. Okay. Um, um, yeah, so it's interesting because it says, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? It sounds like there's a choice here. Yeah. How, how long will we decide to stay simple? And uh, talks about scorners delight in the, uh, 
in their scorning and fool's gate knowledge. So, as believers and non-believers, you need to love knowledge. Because we need the know-how and the understanding of things. It will help us, uh, again, cope with life. And um, anyways, there's just a few things here when it talks about getting understanding. And, um, you know, I have, I have lots of questions, too. And, uh, I'm just going to look. Uh, let's turn to Genesis. One verse twenty nine, <laughs> and um, one verse twenty nine. I'm just sharing this because it it helped me uh, get some understanding about things. Because sometimes, you know, all the word of God is the word of God. It has the breath of God in it. Amen. Amen. So it matters. All of it matters. The full counsel of God matters. And if anything, when you're getting understanding on stuff, to get understanding on stuff, you kind of have to get close, you know, study. And it, it has to do with intimacy, you know. Right. And um, I don't know about you, but I want to be more intimate with the Lord, mm -hmm. understanding the Lord more, yeah. understanding His ways. And uh, that verse comes to mind, you know, you guys know it, uh, Moses, uh, the children of Israel knew his acts, but Moses understood his ways. Because yeah. Moses was more intimate. Uh, the children of Israel, they saw all the awesome things God did, you know, the power gifts, all these things he did, awesomeness, and they, they knew God that way, you know, but they didn't know God intimately. And um, I just believe for every believer here that we want to be more intimate. And with his ways and with the Holy Spirit's ways. Especially in this day and age we're living in. We need to we need to know, know him deeply. So we can make moves that will avoid tragedies and do the right things and not wonder, 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 always wonder, wonder, wonder. And not sure. God doesn't want us to live like that, not sure. He wants us to live sure. And uh, so just as I am sharing these things, I know it'll just bring uh, understanding. In maybe questions you might have had and um, anyways it says here you know I'm telling you guys stuff you guys already know but it's just a good friendly reminder maybe that's why I should name the sermon friendly reminder and God said see I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you it shall be for food so it's obviously there's a tree there right and then there's fruit. What's the fruit for? Somebody answer me. No. What's the fruit for? What, why is there fruit on the tree? Food. Food. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. We can... <laughs> no trick questions here. I just make sure you're paying attention. As simple as that is to me. Okay. Anyways, so the fruit is for eating, and it's, it's on a tree. And then uh, for food. See, that's good too. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, starting in verse 16. Um, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. So there's this, this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Is there fruit on there? Is there fruit on the tree? Anybody? Yeah, there is. Well, God put a tree because how would, how could Adam not eat from it? <laughs> Except for eat, eating the bark, you know, some stuff like native cultures to eat the bark. But anyways, I, I know you guys know this thing. Again, like, I'm not trying to trick anybody here. I just want people to see because when I read the word, I get like that, you know. Uh, you need to think. And sometimes it, it causes you to ask questions. Okay, um, okay, but of the tree, verse 17, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall, you shall surely die. And again, you know, when I would read these things, I'm like, does Adam and Eve know what it means to die? It's just a question, but it's not like we just read the Bible like, you shall surely die. 
Like, did he see anything die? And he gets there and stepped on a beetle. He said, oh, Lord, what happened? We got all this black and now it's all bushy, bushy white. So said, like, where did he die? Is that threatening? So sure did I okay. Anyways, um, so, whose tree is that? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He says you can feed, eat from every tree. <clears throat> whose tree is that? God's tree. See, I know we all know that. God owns that tree. And uh, let's see here. What's some questions? Um, okay. Now let's see. <coughs> The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So now there's two trees. But he only said you can't eat from the one tree, right? So, just from, you know, uh, thinking it through here, I would have to say that Adam probably ate from the tree of life. Because he said every tree you can, but the good and evil, not so good and evil, you're not supposed to. And, um... <coughs> Genesis 3, verse 1, I'm going to read to 15. Now the serpent was more cunning than all, than any beast of the field. I'm reading in the King James. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now God didn't say you can't touch it. <coughs> but obviously somebody's been thinking about something. Maybe he didn't like it. So he said, you can't eat from that. Can't even touch it. <laughs> you know? You gotta see a little, really little in between. I know lots of people say, yeah. Okay, at least you died. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that in that, in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. No doubt, she's already like God, right? Made in the image of God. But uh, he says, you'll, your eyes will be opened, but you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, you know, some people say you can eat and look, but you can't touch. <laughs> this is how the devil works with everything. Everything. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to sin, just look. <laughs> It's always a little step at a time. Um, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, so she must have been looking at it there pretty good, eh? It must have looked like a nice dress in a mall. <laughs> She's looking at it. But the or price tag. Yeah, a pair of shoes. The price tag is a little bit, hmm. You shall surely die. Your husband will kill you for that one. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so she saw that it was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband. I find that interesting, you know, it's like, it's almost like, you don't hear anything about that, but it's almost like he's right there. She ate it, it's like. <laughs> and, and yeah, and nothing happened when she ate. Right? I believe personally that a man is, is the authority. You know, not that he's over the woman, but they have to go through the authority. We all know that uh, the snake couldn't get to the, couldn't get to Adam, because Adam probably would have just 
God already told me I'm not supposed to eat from this thing. What are you kissing me for? So, you know, if you want to get to the husband, go through the wife. And I'm not putting down the wives. My, my kid, kid does this big, very same thing. Mom. But dad said, so dad said. So when Ezekiel does certain things, I go, <laughs> Dad, did you do that? Did you go to the mommy? Because me and mom made it clear, and he said no. Right? And uh, you know how the devil works? He looks for the weakest link. Okay? He wants to get to the man because the man's the authority. And uh, and if he can't get to the man, he's going to get to the woman that, you know, that God created them to have dominion. And if you can't get to the woman, you're going to get to the kids. And we all know, I, I know you guys know this stuff. And even in the church. The people complaining, whining, getting offended. You know, and it's all it gets, tries to get on the pastor. You know, make him more get into drama that he has no need to carry extra weight of anything, right? And uh, because you were the weakest link, you yielded to your flesh, right? You got into that uh, complaining, whining stuff. And you're never happy about anything. And that's how the devil works, right? So don't be the weakest link. Get the right. there. Anyways, um, in the eyes of both, okay. Uh, so she gave, uh, and uh, she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them. I mean, when she ate, she'd be probably like, oh, you seem all right. <laughs> so, I mean, nothing happened, right? And then, so, uh, anyways, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together. <coughs> made themselves covered. So we understand that was the first human works there, fig leaves, your good works, trying to establish your own righteousness, you know, covering yourself, your own sin. And they heard the sound, they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of, of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And it's interesting he was walking. God was walking. You know, I just think about these things. Like, the geek out over this kind of stuff. Okay? He's walking towards, obviously, near the midst of the garden. So I would have assumed that the, the, in the middle, middle of the garden of Eden, that, that's where the trees, tree was. And here's God. He's going there to meet with them, like he always does. And uh, so he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? So Adam and Eve here got some knowledge of things. Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? It's kind of obvious, right? But God knows, right? Uh, then the man said, the woman, here goes the blame game, right? You know how it goes. The woman said, the, I mean, the man said, the woman you gave me to be with, she gave me of the tree and I ate. And then of course, the Lord said, to the woman, right? The next in command. Not less, but just in command. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And then of course the woman blamed, my kid. No. <laughs> the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust. So apparently here, this guy wasn't on his belly. Because if he was on his belly, it's kind of hard to say. Now on your belly, and this neighbor looking up like, I am on my belly. I don't know if you ever watched Veggie Tales. They got these peas. They look, they're, they're vegetables. They look like peas. And then one time there's a story where the queen says, if you don't obey what I say, we're going to chop your head off. And the peas round. You know, so like, How does that work? And so I thought that's funny. Well, same thing here, right? On your belly you shall go. And I even heard scientists, they were actually saying that snakes actually at one time maybe had legs. I think they kind of look like a dragon, if you know what I mean. You know? But anyways, it's some things to think about. And you shall eat dust all the days of your life, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. So we're talking about, this is another topic of the other, but there's obviously the seed of the devil, and women don't have seed. You notice how it says seed, right? And her seed, which we know is Jesus, right? So, and uh, and you shall bruise his heel. Okay. Anyways, um, 
into here. Let's go to Ezekiel. My son has a book over here. Um, Ezekiel verse 28. Uh, chapter 28. I like it when you talk back. Oh, good morning, Dupe. It's good. Yeah. Then if you study the Bible in the time, I know it says Lamentations for the King of Tyre, but it's, not, it's talking about the devil, prophetically, spiritually, however you want to address it up. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up Lamentations for the King of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were a seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfection, perfect in beauty. That's a good line to use on your way. <laughs> Anyways, okay. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. So, so here's this serpent in the Eden, in the garden of Eden. Every precious stone was your covering: the sardis, topaz, diamond, pearl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes. You guys heard studies on this. You can always study up yourself about how Satan is built with, you know, he's music, man. He was a beatbox. He was a big kettle blaster for God. He had music, worship coming out of him. Okay? And um, the, work, uh, the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. And uh, let's see, what's the next verse? Yeah, it, just, it was funny. It says iniquity was found in you. And I looked up the word iniquity just for in the dictionary and it said the absence of moral or spiritual values, darkness, wickedness. So this guy here, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, that's, I think that's a bad thing name, and I didn't get into it, but um, iniquity was found in him. Wickedness, darkness, absence of moral or spiritual values. This guy ended up with some knowledge on evil. Interesting. I wonder where he got it. So, um, I would have to assume he was in the garden. He was in the garden of Eden. It doesn't say how long. I'm not going to go into the study timeline and all that, all that kind of stuff. But um, he, he was in the garden. And um, whose tree was the knowledge of the good, good and evil? Whose tree belonged there? It was the Lord's tree. And here he is meeting in the midst of the garden. When do you think God ate from that tree? It's his tree. He's meeting Adam and Eve there. You know. And I, I would have to assume when he met with them, God would eat from that fruit. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's his tree. But there's a funny thing here. Adam and Eve are affected. I would say, you know, I mean, we're not, we can speculate all we want. I'm not gonna, you know, any fight over anything. But this is, the, this is the kind of stuff I think about you know, in between, getting understanding here. And then all of a sudden, Satan has knowledge of good and evil, or at least evil. He knew he had good. And um, so this whole thing about just getting understanding on things. And then you see God, he owns that, but he, he's not affected by evil, is he? And uh, actually, what was that first? Um, it says... Okay, yeah, 
Um, Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us. Anybody know what the us is? We know it. Who's the us? Tree. Well, who's the one? Tree, he said tree, we have tree. Who, who's one of us? Oh, he said three. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> He's, yeah, okay. The Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us. So it's obviously the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because you know in the beginning, he said, Let us make man. Right? Let us. So he's a team, teamwork here. We've we're, uh, got going on here. And uh, behold, the man has become like one of us. To know good and evil. Does God know evil? It says right here. He's become like one of us. To know good and evil. And now at least he put his hand and take also the tree of life. So now he goes, and eat and live forever. And then now you know what happened. So they didn't eat from the tree of life. Yeah, I don't know if they eat from the tree of life before that time. Because we don't know. I don't know how long this thing has been going on here, right? And uh, But he had to stop them from eating from the tree of life. Because at least they live forever. In that fallen condition. Right? So we see that. But we also see here how God is not affected by evil. Because we know the word of God says God is love. God is full of mercy and grace. He doesn't lie. Right? He's, he's not trying to pull something on us here. And but I do, you know, in, in my thinking, when I when I think about the word of God and you try to get a little more intimate understanding of God, it's like, well, who made evil? And it was funny because I, whatever, I'm not trying to spiritualize it, but it, it came to me this way um, when I was praying. It, it, it's, it's like ingredients, okay? There are lots of ingredients. And you know, you can take household ingredients and make mustard gas and poisons. And a lot of things that God made, He made all things good. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But you know, somebody starts mixing some stuff. You're going to get some crazy stuff. Who's getting the knowledge to make these drugs on the street? Somebody's getting some scientists, because we know these drugs don't just come from accident. Right? Somebody's getting these recipes. Right? I know it's the devil. He speaks to people. You know, you get man-made viruses inspired from hell. Right? How to mix these things together. So, anyways, that's just how it came to me because I, I was I was wanting to understand. There, God's, you know, is God evil? Is He pulling the shenanigans on us? You know, but He's not. And then the, that's why we need to get the Word of God and stay in the light. And the more understanding we have, we can, we can go. Anyways, uh, Deuteronomy it says uh, in 29, 29, the secret things belong to God. Okay, so we don't know everything. I don't know everything. You don't have to know everything. And uh, but God reveals things to us, Amen. And things are revealed intimately when you get into. You can't produce nothing if you don't get into it, right? You can just stay on the outside. But we need to produce things spiritually. We need to birth things. We need to get into them. God quicker births things. And um, this whole this this kind of first part of the combo is about just being more effective and uh, intimate. And uh, and uh, at this time, Kingsley's going to come up and share, right? Pastor Tully. <laughs> Just joking, brother. <laughs> just want to see if you're awake. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's a private joke going on there. <laughs> you know what's going on. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, um, get understanding. Okay? And um, so this next part, it, it's going to be more towards... Like five after twelve, guys. Okay, I'm just gonna go really fast. Is that great for a bit? And uh, if you get bored, you gotta leave. That's fine. I, I can cut it off. You know, and stop it. Um, anyways, this whole thing here—it's kind of like a bit of commentary, but we're gonna look up some scriptures, and um, this is now kind of going towards uh, the understanding here. We're gonna be talking about uh, more on the vibe. 
Well, you'll see. It's, 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 kind of, it's geared towards prayer and understanding. Okay, and I am going to go really fast here. Let's see. I don't know if keep up as much with that. I was trying to be slow so that people can get it. 115, Psalms 115, verse 16. Okay, familiar, uh, familiar Bibles. One familiar. It says, The heavens, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. So who, who owns the earth? According to the scripture, we do. The heavens, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth he has given to the children of men. When you understand that, and you ask, why is there, why is this, why is there so much evil in the world? Right here. The earth is given to the children of men. It's our fault. Right? Out of sin. He brought it in. Okay? God's still in heaven. Anyways, and then, um, so just that bit of understanding will help you wonder why. You know, because sometimes you wonder why, Lord, Lord, I'm not healed and this and this. Just the frustrations. I want to help eliminate a lot of those things. And uh, let's go to Second Chronicles. Uh, let's see if this thing gets on the button. If it's on YouTube, you can always check it out. You can study that. Second Chronicles, verse seven. I mean, chapter seven, verse fourteen. Thank you. Okay, fourteen. It says here, "If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways." Then I will hear from heaven, right? He's up there, and we're on the earth, and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So it says, if my people, if you're saved, are you his people? Yes. Amen. Amen. Are you called? Yes. Are you answering the call? Yes. To what? To pray. pray. How? By humbling yourselves. And seek my face. Not my hand, right? You know that? Seek my face. And turn from and turn from their wicked ways. So if you have any wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. So the problem's on the earth. Yeah. That's our fault. But God's wanting to partner up with us. And there's our part. He's waiting, okay? And, um, okay, so I'm just going to go here to the book of Jonah. Where's Jonah? Anybody see Jonah? Who was he before? He's in the whale. Jonah, here he is. You guys know about Jonah. But anyways, okay, we'll just start verse 1. Uh, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amathea, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee from Tarshish, uh, flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into the, into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent sent out a great wind on the sea. Interesting, this one's from the Lord, the, the, the wind. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea. I didn't study it, but anyway. So that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God. Okay, so everybody has gods, okay? They believe in something. And uh, they threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down to the lowest part of the ship. He had laid down and was fast asleep. Kind of reminds me of Jesus, you know, when there's a big storm. Jonah's just sleeping away. Okay, no sleeping church, please. So the captain came to him. What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your god. I mean, there's like... We need help. Call SpongeBob. Call whoever. Just call out anybody. Call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. So everybody's just looking for that help, right? And they said to, to one another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know who's caused this trouble, who's come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Winner. Then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, and who made the sea and the dry land. So people know about this God, of course. But again, they didn't really know him like God's people does. Then the men were exceedingly afraid. Okay, And they said to him, Why have you done this? For the men, for the men knew that for the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. So they knew God was, God had a big reputation. They obviously know about this God of heaven and earth because he had told them. Then they said to him, what shall we do that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was 
uh, growing more tempestuous. Yeah. And he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. And walk the plank, buddy. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. It's kind of funny and amusing that he tried to run away from God. But I guess we do it all the time. <laughs> you know, as big as God is, he sees everything. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to the land. See, they didn't want to throw him in there like, mm, I don't know if that's the truth. You know, it's like, yeah, sure, buddy. You know, if you throw you in the sea, we'll, everything will calm down. So maybe they didn't quite believe it, you know. Anyways, but they could, uh, they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous, tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O oh Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life. Um, anyways, the, basically the story there, um, they're gonna, they finally said, We're going to throw him in. You know, no hard feelings, Lord. <laughs> We're trying to throw this guy out into the sea. And uh, so they picked, verse 15, they picked up Jonah, threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men uh, feared the Lord. Exceedingly, look at these guys. Are like, wow, you know what a testimony! Eh? And they offered a sacrifice to the Lord. They don't even know this God. It's like, okay, you're the boss. And then they took vows. I'll never steal again. I'll never, you know, they're making vows. You know, they're feeling all. I thought it was quite comical there. Um, so he prepared the great fish, and we know the story there. Let's see, uh, chapter two. Jonah prayed to the Lord from the fish's belly. Uh, he offered sacrifice, and it's funny, sacrifice in the fish, I mean, talked about it, it's basically the sacrifice he made was the thanksgiving. So it's, it's, uh, thanksgiving is a sacrifice. And um, let's see. I don't want to. Should I do, uh, Pastor, I don't want to like, stretch out too long. Are you guys okay? Are you guys okay? How many more minutes? Okay, I'll stop when you guys start chucking the fruit. <laughs> That's all good. I'm, I'll be personal. Okay. Um, I'll go to verse 6. I went down. Um, let's see. Verse 10. So the Lord spoke to the fish. You can speak to fish. And it vomited Jonah on dry land. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. Preach the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh, Nineveh was a great, exceeding great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day. Then he cried out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So he's declaring this over the city. Nineveh is going to be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed the fast. They actually believed this guy. I don't know what he looked like. You hear all the stories, you know, he looked like all fished out and his skin was white. He looked like a freaky guy. And there's other stories having to do with them um, worshiping fish when you look at the Nineveh uh, carvings and stuff like this. Anyways, maybe because he spat out from the fish, they believe you know, it is a message. And uh, they put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Then the word of the Lord came to the king. The word came to king, king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his, his and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. He caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast nor flock taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will relent and turn away from his fierce anger? So God already said, this place is going to be fried. Okay, he, Jonah declared that. This guy actually believed God and feared God. And now they're trying to do everything they can. They're desperate. It's like, maybe we can change this outcome. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about things being changed here by prayer. Okay, Things don't have to be the way they are. We can change it. Okay, Then God saw their works. Okay, He saw some action that they turned from their evil way. It's like that verse we talked about, humble himself and pray. And God relented from the disaster that he had said would, uh, he would bring upon them, and he, and he did not do it. Here's God. Does God change? You know, God change, I change not. Does God change his mind? Apparently he does. And it had to do with the people on the earth that he gave us to it. Uh, verse 4, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly. So now Jonah's ticked off, and he became angry. 
So he prayed to the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? So he's like, I, I, I know you, God. That's why he's trying to run away from God. He goes, I fled previously to Tarshish, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God. Isn't that awesome? He knew God is merciful. And, and he's like, I don't want to save these guys. I'm prejudiced. I'm racist. I don't care about those in the bites. That's he's pretty much right. And then oh, Christian too, eh? Praise the Lord. And anyways, no, no Christians like that, right? For I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. God does not want to do harm. God wants things to change. God is for us, amen? And then anyways, therefore now, Lord, please take my life from me. What a pity party. Bummer. Take my life. For it is better for me to die than to live. I don't know what this guy's issues are, man, but you know what I mean. Anyways, then the Lord said, it is, is it right for you to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city, probably had a pity party. And he sat on the east side of the city. There he made himself a shelter and sat under it in the shade till he might see what would become the city. So he's still not sure if the city's going to get fried. So he's going to have to watch this get fried. And the Lord prepared a plan, made it come over Jonah, and it might be shaved for his head to deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very grateful for the plan. But as the morning dawned, the next day, God prepared a warm. Here, warm, warm. He got parts of warmth. And, and, and so damaged the plant that it withered. And it happened when the sun arose that God prepared a vehement east wind, and the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. Then he wished death for himself. So he's, he was crazy from the heat, this guy. And uh, I don't know, I mean, uh, if he died, he'd probably just go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> trying to run away from God. Anyways, then he wished death on himself and he said, it is better for me to die than to live. Anybody ever get self-pity? Then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plan? And he said, it is right for me to be angry, even to death. Mm -hmm. Got that right? I'm allowed to be ticked off. But the Lord said, you have had pity on the plan for which you have not labored, nor made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which are more than 120,000 persons, 120,000 persons who cannot discern their right hand and their left and much livestock. God's like, I care about these people. I care about people who don't know what's right and wrong. And he wants us to change it. Right? He wants us to pray. And he cares about the livestock. He puts in the livestock in there. And um, anyways, just, you know, I am going to close pretty soon here. Um, we're just talking about Daniel, you know, when he prayed 21 days, right? You guys know the story? Yeah. It's funny, it says, from the day you set your heart to understand, yeah. you know? Yeah, and we heard from the first day. Man, if you would have known that, you wouldn't have even had to fast. <laughs> I know you heard me, God, from the first day. It's like, woo, I don't have to fast. But you know, the thing is, we live in this earth, there's, there's I'll just say static, the spiritual realm, you know? We feel things, we, we you know, we, we don't know what's going on. And that's why we have to hang on to the Word of God that gives clarity and keeps us stable. Because if you live by your feelings, that's what got you in trouble, yeah. right? Because you didn't take dominion over your feelings, your emotions, whatever your impulses were. That's what got you in trouble. Adam didn't take dominion. And if you got a lot of problems in areas, it's probably because you didn't take dominion over it. You know, you led by feelings. You bought this. You should have gone out finances, whatever area, emotionally. You know, you're, you're just all over the place. And then, um, then there's King Hezekiah, because I'm talking about prayer here and how it changed it. Hezekiah, uh, Elijah, Isaiah said to him, you're going to die. Got his house in order. It says he turned to the wall. He started weeping bitterly, you know. And, and what I find assuming is, uh, what's cool is Isaiah, he knows. He's intimate with the Lord. He's walking out. He's just proclaiming the word of the Lord. How many of you give him the Lord, word of the Lord? And then on the way out, God says, change that. You're like, what do you mean? I took all the notions to just say the word of God. Now you're telling me to change the opposite thing of what I just said? There's some closeness here. This is what I'm talking about, the intimacy of the Spirit. So you know, it's like, he actually heard God. He didn't say, that's the devil. I just gave the word of the Lord. No, he's like, tell the guy. I heard his cry. He can live. So God can change things around. And um, then there's in Genesis, Abraham, um, you know, he goes, he basically said, uh, should we, should we not tell Abraham when we're going to destroy Sodom? And then, you know, Abraham starts doing the wheel and deal, you know, like in the, in the garage sale or, you know, Craigslist. Uh, you know, do I hear 50? If there's 50 righteous people, are you going to destroy the, the, the Sodom? And God's like, no, I won't. And then uh, Abraham starts, you know, giving it to God. He starts telling him, well, you know, are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? That's not right, God. That's not right. 
And then he says, uh, excuse me, uh, I'm a bit of a, I'm a kind of, you know, I'm made of ashes and uh, I'm made of dust, you know, uh, so don't get mad at me. And then he starts, he starts jewing them down from 50 to 10. Okay? He starts doing the, uh, you know, yeah, but you guys understand what I'm saying. Right? Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> Anyway, so he, he boils it down to 10. He goes, if there's 10 righteous in, in Sodom, are you going to spare the city? God said, for 10, I will spare the city. And God's not even mad. He cares that somebody's standing in the gap. That, I was going to read that verse, but I didn't. But it was talking about standing in the gap. Is there not a man who's standing in the gap? Is there anybody who cares about Canada and what's going on? We can shut this COVID thing down, you know what I mean? Like, we got to cry out to God bring changes here. And um, anyways, God wasn't ticked off by Abraham because... Uh, he, won he saw somebody who cared, and then obviously there wasn't even ten righteous in, in, in Sodom. And you know the story, he picks up uh, his nephew there. But my point is there, it only takes a few of us for God to change his mind and hold back judgment. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how powerful your influences and your prayers are. And uh, I just want to encourage you that way. And... Uh, anyways... That, that's pretty much my point of the thing about, about praying. That's the second part of the, the two-piece meal. And just like encourage you to take your authority, you know, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, all these things, bring understanding that you give yourself to God first, binding and loosing, uh, casting out devils. There's a story where Jesus, the, 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 that lady came, she goes, you know, I, I want uh, crumbs from the master's table. And since that very hour, the demon left the girl. Like, you can cast out devils right from your prayer room. Yeah. Amen? You don't have to go up to somebody and have all the drama and the throb. <laughs> okay? I don't want that. <laughs> I mean, no, seriously, right? These things are, 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 when you know who you are, you're changing things in the spiritual realm. That's what prayer does. It sends, it employs the angels to go out. You know, you, the Bible says we're supposed to live a peace, peaceable, quiet life, minding our own business. But man, we can shake things up just from our prayer closet. Yeah. I just want to encourage you. The, the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man avails much. You can avail much on this planet. You can just sit down and not care. You know, we have to partner with God and, and not, it says wrestle against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling. There's a wrestling there. Things aren't automatic, you know. There's, there's our part. And uh, anyways, that's all I wanted to share with you. And um, is there anything you wanted me to do, Pastor? I just want to do announcements and closing prayer. And I just want to finish the prayer. Just prayer. Okay, we'll close in prayer. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the light that it brings. We thank you for the faith that it brings, that we can access realms. We thank you, Lord, that we can be more intimate with you and move uh, with the Holy Spirit, Father. I just pray that we take our place, Lord, as your children, um, as your partners, as your body, as your sons and daughters, Father, to bring heaven on earth. Your will be done on this earth like it is in heaven. We know what it's like in heaven. And you're up there, and you're laughing. Because you've got no problems. And you're waiting for us to call on you to move. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As we humble ourselves and pray and turn from our ways, you will hear from heaven and heal our land. It's no problem for you, Father. Amen. We just thank you, Father. We take our place as your children in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Rocky. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Just before we dismiss, there's just uh, we pray over the offering, and then uh, I've got just a couple announcements to make real quick. Uh, so we pray over the offering. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be able to give our tithes and offerings today, Lord God. We thank you for your blessing to continue to flow in each home, in each household, each individual, each family, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. And we thank you that you are the all-sufficient one, Father God. And we thank you for every need of this church to be met, every need of every household represented here today, Father God. I'm going to walk in the fullness of what you have, want, desire for each one. We bless and thank you for that now. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Just want to quickly draw some announcements to your attention. Uh, just reminding you, we've been talking about prayer. Uh, prayer, we have online prayer is uh, Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. Uh, you can join us uh, through the Zoom app if you have that. You can download that and you can join us at uh, 7 o'clock. We're on from 7 till 8, uh, beginning, beginning again this Wednesday night. We had a couple week break, so that's come back for this Wednesday. 
Uh, remind you about the food bank. I, we, we fooled a few people this morning by moving it to the right-hand side. I saw it was funny watching people walk over with their food bank. They must have thought the rapture happened with the food or something, because all the food that was there last week, it's, it's all been now moved over to the right-hand side. Uh, so we've got a few more weeks uh, that you can thank you for those of you that have brought uh, the food in. Uh, we're going to the first Sunday in December, uh, so I encourage you, if you haven't brought anything, or even bring a little bit more. You know, God's going to bless you and honor that as we do that, so, but thank you for those of you that have responded in that regards. Uh, ladies, and gentlemen. ladies, thank you. Ladies, there is a ladies function that is taking place on Saturday the 28th, I believe that's the date. It's 11 a.m. here at the church. Uh, you can see Roz for more information. I think there's uh, there's a video they're teaching. They're going to show from Priscilla Schreier. I think is how you pronounce her last name. And so you'll be blessed by that. Uh, for those of you, we, we, the last time we did growth group, uh, we did her book, and so it was an awesome teaching. Uh, she's a great anointed woman of God. So you guys will be blessed. There'll be uh, food as well, uh, a luncheon, light lunch. All right, as opposed to a heavy one. There will be a light lunch, as so you can see Roz signed up for that. I also want to thank each and every one of you that have responded, uh, of course, being faithful with tithes and offerings, um, also with the, um, the insurance fund. Thank you for those of you that have responded to that and just continue to be praying about what you would do to contribute to that. Uh, as I mentioned before, there was quite a, a hit that uh, we got from the insurance company. But thank you, for those of you that have responded, and, and just God's blessing is continue to flow in the house. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to see that need met, need satisfied. Hallelujah. Is there anything else that I need to be praying about? Uh, just keep, uh, we've got to keep our, our community in prayer. We've got to keep this nation in prayer. Uh, just with all that's been taking place with, uh, you know, the coronavirus and everything like that, it just you open up the newspaper every day, that's, the numbers are changing, and We've just got to be diligent, we've got to be faithful, we've got to stand on the Word of God. Amen. And we thank you that no plague is going to come nigh this dwelling place, no plague is going to come nigh any of the dwelling places that are represented here. Amen. We're going to walk in good health, wholeness, and wellness. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Get you to stand with me, please, if you will. I want to thank each one of you for being here today. Uh, God bless you. Have a blessed, wonderful rest of the day. You are dismissed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.